In this video, we continue with parallel lines and we focus on co-interior angles. If in the sketch we focus on angle G1 and G2, we know that they form a straight line and therefore have to add up to 180 degrees. But because we have parallel lines, we also know that G1 and H1 are equal in size because of corresponding angles. If we now go and focus on the two angles on the inside of our parallel lines, you will see that together they also add up to 180 degrees. So from this we can make the conclusion that two angles on the inside of our parallel lines will always add up to 180 degrees. These two angles are called co-interior angles. And just like with corresponding and alternate angles, it is only true if the lines are parallel. If the lines are not parallel, the two angles won't add up to 180 degrees. But as soon as they are parallel again, these two angles are supplementary. Just like with the previous two properties, we can search for a specific letter to help us identify co-interior angles. Do you remember that we have an F for corresponding and an N for alternate angles? In this case, we will be calling them co-interior angles. And for co-interior angles, we will be on the lookout for a U form. If the arms of the U are parallel, the sum of the two angles on the inside of the U will be 180 degrees. And as I've mentioned, these two angles are called co-interior angles. Co-interior angles can also be applied on the other side of the transversal line, where G3 and H3 also add up to 180 degrees. Next, let's go and have a look at some examples. Example 1. Determine the size of x. In the sketch, we are given two parallel lines. And if I go and form angle x, you will realize that I can complete a u. And in this u, I already have one of the interior angle sizes. Therefore, I can determine angle x. But now you just need to remember that x is not also 50 degrees. But that angle x together with the 50 degrees should equal 180 degrees. The reason here will be co-interior angles along with my parallel lines of AB parallel to CD. Therefore, X is 130 degrees. Example 2. Determine the size of X and Y. Again, we are given a pair of parallel lines. And if I start by forming my angle X, you will see that once again it is part of co-interior angles, the U, along with the 85 degrees. So X plus the 85 degrees is equal to 180 degrees. And again, my reason here is co-interior angles along with my parallel lines of GH parallel to IJ. So angle X is 95 degrees. Next, we need to determine the size of y. And here you can see that you can very easily make the mistake of saying that y forms part of alternate angles, so y is 85 degrees. But even though these two are alternate angles, line KL and MN are not parallel. And that is why you need to focus on angle y, but also on the other parallel line then you will see that we can form an upside down F for corresponding angles. Therefore, I can say that angle Y is 100 degrees for the reason corresponding angles and again my parallel lines. It is very important to realize that corresponding, alternate and co-interior angles will be visible in the same sketch. You will have to decide which of them will help you to determine your unknown angles. In the next video, we're going to have a look at examples 
that combine all the properties and theorems that we've done up to date.